today we are going taking our camper to get some of the warranty work done that needs to be done and then also we are got the leveling system to work but I was going to talk to you about getting your camper ready to take to the dealership for repairs keep watching We are taking our camper to the dealership. Oh! Oh my gosh! How did that happen? Oh! Oh my gosh! The uh, the skylight was left open and it poured down rain in here. I don't know who opened the skylight. And that's supposed to be on an auto sensor and it's supposed to close when it rains. Obviously, that failed because the floor is soaking wet. Oh my gosh. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's soaking wet. So now I gotta do that before I start cleaning up everything to get it ready. Oh, always something. Did you open up the skylight in the kitchen? No. It is wide open and it is poured rain inside the camper. I thought that thing was supposed to be automatic loads. Well, that's what I thought so too, but it obviously didn't. I'm gonna try to close it. I'm wondering if it's got messed up because it's way up. I mean, I've never seen it as high as it is. Just closed it, it closed. Yeah, well, it's, it rained yesterday though. Well, that's just from yesterday. They had time to soak in everything. Yeah, well, I'm gonna wipe it up because I come in here to start picking, you know, getting everything ready and uh, always something. You'll have to pay better attention. Hey, better of attention. I hadn't been in the camper in probably two weeks. You haven't been out there every day, just about. Huh? Not in the camper. Might be outside, but not in the camper. <clears throat> so, anyway. All right. Love you. Love you. Bye. I guarantee you he opened it up to cool it off in here because the one in the bathroom was open, too. But it wasn't open like this one was. <laughs> when I take it to the dealership, they don't have a lot of stuff to work around. And I know that one of the recalls is the microwave being taken out and putting a heat shield behind it. I'm gonna clean this out so that way they don't have to fight around my stuff. There, I just stick it all in the tote. That way you can just carry it and go put it somewhere. And then when we get our camper back, you can just bring it back out here put it all right back up you take your rv to the dealership to be worked on make sure you remove anything that's personal or anything that might could get taken I'm not saying that they would take it but you just want to take that out of the camper just so that you don't have to worry about that not sure if i showed you this or not but you know i put this in and i wanted something to hang some necklaces on I don't have long necklaces, all of mine are short, so this works perfect for me. And then up here, it's got little grooves for my rings to go in and then put earrings there. But I made this all from Dollar Tree items. <laughs> it turned out pretty cool. I almost forgot, I need to check the fridge, make sure everything's out and turn it off. That way it's not working while they're working on it and you don't really need it anyway. 
The other thing that's on the recall, I think is in there, up under, and they're gonna be working on our auto leveling system. So we wanna take as much as this out as we can to give them full access to this without having to unload stuff and load stuff. We should have unloaded a lot of this when we got back from the beach because this is all beach stuff here. All right, now we've got most of this unloaded. I'm gonna let Bill unload his other side so that way he knows what he needs in there and what he doesn't because that's his side. I don't deal with that. We're gonna get everything and get it closed up and take it to the dealership. We're getting it finished hooking up. Vail is not going to the RV dealership with us. She just thinks that she is. I had to pull my hair up. It's so dang hot and humid right now. But anyway, we are gonna finish up here and head to the dealership. Too bad we're not getting to go camping in the camper. Taking it to get worked on. I'm sitting here at Campers Unlimited. I'm sitting here talking about getting your RV serviced and I had a question. All right, so what would you say is the biggest thing that techs want when somebody comes to take their RV that they would want them to do prepare before they bring their camper in? Well, I think some of the biggest things are uh, if you're bringing it in for your kitchen faucets leaking, clean out underneath your where your kitchen faucet is um, under that cabinet because that takes time for the guys to stop and they're having to touch all your things, they're having to get everything out of the way, um, and bathroom sinks, same thing. And if you whatever you're bringing in to have done, clean the area around it so they can get to it. Um, if you store stuff in your camper along the walking path and you're asking us to work on your air conditioner and we're having to trip over stuff to get to it, it, it just takes extra time that they don't get paid to do. You know, things, if you're bringing it in to um, have something done to your toilet, empty your tanks <laughs> before you bring it to us. Uh, flush them out real good, make them smell better. <laughs> that helps, that always sure. helps. Uh, make sure your power cord's available. Um, and make sure your keys. Uh, one of the biggest things if um, you, you know, a lot of places we say as long as the paddle lock is locked, not the deadbolt, but people don't understand what that means. Um, then when it comes time to get in your camper, we're having to wait on you to bring your keys or they're having to wait on a guy to come open the paddle lock. Tyler, like two. It's just easier Tyler, your keys like two. And a lot of new campers, especially right now, people are buying campers left and right and if they don't understand, one of the biggest problems that we have that nobody wants to fix is if your poop tank gets stopped up. Yes. Okay. So keep your tanks closed until they have to be emptied. Do not leave them open just because you're piped into that septic line out there. Do not leave that tank open. Keep it closed. Um, if you start to smell something, go ahead and fill it up with water and flush it out before your weekend's out. But fill it up with water and flush it out and then leave it closed, otherwise it stops up and you're gonna have problems later. That's one of the biggest, most important things to do. If, you, you, if you're only camping for the weekend, you're probably okay to leave it closed until you get done, but if you're gonna be there for a couple of weeks, keep it closed, open it. Uh, when you open it, just go ahead and fill it up with water and you don't have to let it get full before you flush it, just as long sure. as you fill it up so it washes it out. That's what you need. Okay, so, awesome. Okay. Well, thank you so much. You're right, no problem. Uh, thank have you. a good day. You too. Hopefully we'll get our camper back in the future weeks um we're just then we had to drop it off for the uh, couple of recalls couple of recalls and a uh, couple of little issues that we had of course the auto leveling and then i'm just going to get him to look at that rain sensor this morning that i it had water all over the floor so hopefully we'll pick up our camper in a few weeks and i will update you on that process well, it's been several weeks later and we're going to pick up the camper today. It is ready and we're gonna take you along with that process too. We take the hitch in and out of the truck when we're not carrying the camper and Phil has his tractor at the hunting club because that's normally where he, how he gets it in and out. So now I'm gonna have to help him. Oh dear Jesus. Yeah. 
um, I had my client call at the perfect time, didn't I? Uh-oh. No! <laughs> yeah. That, he's used to that. <laughs> I always, whoop, bless you. I always get um, calls at the most unopportune time. But anyway, we are headed out. Okay. This is the 390, the one that I want. So <gasps> this one has like a wood looking. At the other ones I've seen had like the rocks. Uh -huh. This is... And plus I love the little bar so you can sit there. See what I would do? I would take this couch out and put me a desk. And a desk, yeah. You and then you still got two couches. Yeah, you could do that easily. Oh, I'm in trouble. You're in trouble. <laughs> I like it. I love I think I love that because I the ones I've been seeing is like a rock I think yeah. but that wood looks so good oh and then it's got a place like if you wanted to put your computer and stuff up here you could run the cord through uh -huh, right this in my home not with this little bitty stuff with the bigger stuff uh -huh. right. and I love it I love it Double sinks. I don't know that I like the little bitty sinks though. If you haven't looked up this new floor plan by Solitude 390, it is a great floor plan. And this like, see, look what happens when you go service your vehicle, you look at other ones. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, I love that. There's just so much storage. Like, especially if you full-timed, this would be really perfect. How yeah. Have I'm really impressed with this one. See, when you go service your camper, don't go look at the other campers. Don't go look. <laughs> Get you in trouble. Grand Design took care of like a little issue that we had. And then we had two recalls that they fixed. And then they just checked out a couple of other things for us and nothing needed to be fixed. They just had to recalibrate the uh, landing gear. So, all right, we're waiting on somebody to come jump us off because the batteries are dead. Take our camper back home because we've got to get everything loaded up to take it to the hunting club. I hope you like this little bit of video, ins and outs of getting your RV serviced. I wanted to kind of get the dealership's take on it as well, so that's why I asked them what they would recommend that people do wrong when they're coming to get serviced. A good don't is do not go look in the new campers. That is not a don't. Don't go look in the new campers when you're going to get your RV service. Not a good thing. As far as service goes, they have been super nice at Campers Unlimited in Gadsden. They were really nice. They did get it quicker than what the other place said. I, they're just overwhelmed. Service in campers is just overwhelming. That they, That's what we're getting from everybody saying. So I think that's probably the only frustrating thing that we have had about our camper is having it serviced. We break that down. That Simplify what she said. Um, Campers Unlimited, super friendly, great people. Good people, seem really nice and all that. But no matter where you take your camper to, I don't think there's enough qualified technicians anywhere across any camping dealership for them to be able to turn over the campers very quick to get them in and out during service. So if you're carrying your camper to have it serviced, Gonna, it's going to be there for a few weeks, if not a little bit more. It's not a, it's not a reflection on the, camp, the, the business. It's a reflection on, from what I've gathered, the lack of qualified technicians available to work on the campers. See, you just broke down what I said in shorter form. You know, I'm like a drawer-outer. <laughs> he is like to the point. <laughs> Well, all right. Well, I hope you like this video. Welcome to all our new families. So please, if you're not subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button. 
hit that bell notification so every time we upload a video you are notified and till next time Home. Now, got a lot to get ready to take it to the hunting club.